Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tech Uploaded. I'm Chris, and today we're building the FreeNAS box. All right, so this video has been a long time coming. I've actually had these components for quite a while, and with as much storage as I'm using at this point in time, with all the videos and everything else that I'm doing, I decided it was time to actually put a FreeNAS box in place on my home network. So it's exactly what I'm doing, and I decided to take advantage of some of the components that I still had lying around and kind of put them to good use. So what I've got here is a pretty simple complement of hardware. Housing the FreeNAS build will be the Node 304 Mini ITX computer case by Fractal Design. Then I do have a flash drive to install the FreeNAS operating system onto, as well as three 2 terabyte Western Digital Red hard drives, 8 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz memory, DDR3 of course, an EVGA 430 watt power supply, a Core i3-3225 processor, an ASRock H61MVITX Mini ITX motherboard, and then of course an Intel NIC because I like to use Intel whenever I'm doing something that is server based. So this build should be pretty straightforward. I'm going to run through it pretty quickly. And then once that's done, it's time to install FreeNAS and get everything set up and running on my home network. All right, it's all done, put together. That wasn't too bad, actually. Uh, the worst part about it was cable management. Trying to manage the cables in this thing as small as it is is kind of a bear. 
In the perfect world, I would have used a modular power supply to keep some of those cables out of the way. However, price being the primary concern here, I went with one that wasn't, and it was just fine. I had places to put the cables, so not a big deal. So now, the key is to boot this thing up and go through the install of FreeNAS. All right, once you download the disk image, what you're gonna wanna do is make sure you have a program called Win32 Disk Imager, and you'll also need the 7-zip utility to actually extract this. So let's see if I can do an open with. No, nope, I'm gonna have to, or that was share with, open with, I'm gonna have to do manually. So 7-zip, there we go. All right, then I'm gonna just shortcut by up, up here, type desktop. Then I need to select the file and tell it I want to extract it. And we'll just go ahead and dump it to the desktop again. All right, close out of that. And now this should be in here. So you've got your disk image. So what you wanna do is fire up the disk imager software. Make sure that G drive is the correct one, which it is, that's my flash drive. So then I'm gonna click on here to browse to it and go to my desktop, click on this, double click on that, and then go ahead and click right. It's gonna give you one last chance to back out. So click yes. All right, when it's done, it'll just simply say write successful and you're good to eject the disk and plug it into the USB port on the FreeNAS box. All right, so the system is booted. So now the next thing to do is go into the BIOS and take a look at everything in here and make sure it all checks out. So on the first screen, we can see Core i3-3225 at 3.3, that's correct. And all eight gigabytes of memory is accounted for. So the next thing to look for is to go over here and look under storage configuration and make sure that you see all three of the Western Digital two terabyte drives, which we do. So they're all there, that's good. And then the last thing I wanna do actually is locate where the onboard options are. All right, and that's gonna be under Southbridge configuration. And I'm gonna go down here and turn off the LAN because I don't want the system to get confused when it's trying to figure out if it should use the onboard or the Intel which I went with the Intel because I know that FreeNAS can see that particular network adapter. It's one of the most compatible ones out there. So if you're ever in doubt, spend the 30 bucks, get that Intel adapter. So now I'm just gonna back out of here and go over to exit and save changes and exit. But before I do that, I've got to plug in the USB stick. All right, so FreeNAS is finally booted. When it is, you'll be left with this screen right here. And the important thing to note is your IP address. This is the IP address you're gonna have to use to boot into the web interface. So make sure you write it down. Now, a few notes to get to this point. I had to use version 9.2.0 of FreeNAS, so I had to actually go to the version history and download that one because the most recent version just wouldn't play nice with my configuration for whatever reason. I also had to use a USB 2.0 thumb drive and not the ADATA USB 3 drive, uh, which was weird because even though it was plugged into a USB 2.0 port, it wouldn't play nice with it. And as a matter of fact, the only ports that are available on the motherboard I used are USB 2.0. There is no 3.0 on that board. So once I switched to a flash drive that would work and used the 9.2.0 version of FreeNAS, we finally got to a point where we can navigate to the web interface. So that's the next step. All right, so here is the web interface. The very first time that you log into it, you will have to change your password, which is always a good thing, but it does pop up here and show you the landing screen. So what you need to do now is create a volume. So I'm going to go over to storage, volumes, and then I'm going to create a ZFS volume. All right, so it's showing that I have three available disks. So I'm going to add all three of those disks down here and they're gonna show up as RAID Z and then I'm gonna name the volume. So I'm gonna call this volume one, vol one. And then once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and add the volume. Now, no, when I do this, that existing data will be cleared, but there was nothing on these hard drives, so not a big deal. You'll notice that this is gonna give me 3.63 terabytes of storage when it's done. All right, so once that's done, it's gonna show up over here. So you can click plus next to that. And then I want to create a data set so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and I'm gonna name this data set one. I'm gonna leave everything else as it is set. 
All right, then once that's set up, now you can create the periodic snapshot. So you want to click on that and then add a snapshot. And then on here, I'm going to go ahead and let this run two weeks. And this is nine to five, or actually nine to six. And I'm going to turn on Saturday and Sunday and jump this over to, let's say, six hour intervals. And I'm going to hit OK on that. Now, what this is going to do is if I accidentally delete a file or something, I can actually go back to a previous version of this, you know, where I had files stored and get that file back if something goes wrong. So that's always nice. And then once that is done, it's time to turn on sharing. So I need to create a Windows share. So I'll click on that and then add Windows share. And then what you want to do in here is actually name it something that you're going to be able to find. I'm going to name it DS1. And then it says to turn on export. Uh, let's see, where is it? Export recycle bins. Browsable on the network, which it is. And then allow guest access. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK on that. Oh, path. Need to tell it which path. Almost forgot. So we're going to look at data set one for the path. So now that is set. And hit OK. And yes, I would like to enable this service. So you see now it turned on CIFS. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to go into my volumes. And then I want to click on this volume. And I want to change permissions to make sure that I'll actually be able to see this. So I'm just going to enable the right permission on this. OK, so now everything should be set. So I need to actually open a file explorer and browse to the address. So 192.168.1.106. And there is data set 1. There's nothing in there. And I need to change volumes for data set 1. Actually, I was clicked on the wrong thing. Here we go. There we go. All right, now I should be able to create a new folder. Yep, test folder. All right, so now the key is to actually map this network drive. So what I'm going to do now, we know that's called DS1. So I'm going to go back to here. So to do that, I'm going to click on Computer and Map Network Drive. And I'm going to go ahead and name this drive Z. So I will do 192.168.1.106 and DS1. Reconnect it, sign in, hit finish, and there it is. So now, right there is my network drive. So I can pop into there, copy files over, do all that good stuff. So now the key is to see how fast this drive actually is. So I'm going to move something over to it from my video folder. We'll just move over the top file. So this is. 15 gigabytes in size, so let's see how long it takes it to copy that file. All right, so it started off at about you know 100 megabytes a second, and it's just kind of fluctuating back and forth now between like 50 and 100 because it's moving uh, lots of little small files, which Windows doesn't like. It slows down its file transfer, but as you can see, it's working and it's working well, um, pretty quick, and it's going to be a nice. Nice, safe, alternative place to store my files. Obviously, I'm still going to use an offsite backup for anything that's really important, uh, as well as online, uh, using one of the online tools, which I'm not going to name. But uh, I'd like to have three different places where my files are. But this is really nice because it allows me, I'll be able to start offloading videos onto this. And then I'll know that the NAS box is actually keeping track of the safety of those volumes, because ZFS actually is really good about alerting you uh, if something's about to go wrong, not to mention it is in a nice RAID array, uh, which has redundancy built into it. So if one of the drives goes bad, I can just swap it out and everything should still be intact. So there you have it, a free NAS build. That really wasn't bad, actually. Just installing the free NAS software, there was a couple of hiccups, but nothing that a quick Google search and swapping out a flash drive couldn't solve. But the actual build itself, super easy. And you know what? This is a great weekend project. Maybe if you got a Sunday afternoon free, if you have another computer sitting around especially, dust that thing off, maybe throw some new hard drives and a little bit more memory in it because free NAS is a little memory hungry. And boom, you got a NAS. You know, I built from almost all new components because I had an idea in mind. I really wanted to use that fractal case and, you know, put my i3 processor to use, so I had to get a new motherboard. But you don't have to do all that. And it's a great DIY project. It's something you're going to probably use every day. 
Everybody in your household can use it, so it's something to really take pride in. And if you are thinking about doing this, definitely check out the Tech Syndicate video. I'm going to have it linked in the description below. Huge thanks to Wendell for putting that together. He goes into a lot of detail about why you would turn on certain features, what they do, different security measures you can take, just lots of different things that you might need to know about doing a free NAS build, including plugins and going into detail about shadow copy. So just really, really helpful. If you're thinking about doing a free NAS build, definitely check that out. It was very helpful to me. This was really more of a proof of concept based off of his directions, and it worked great. So if you found this video helpful, please go ahead and click on that subscribe button. You can also follow me on Twitter over at Tech Uploaded. And if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know the drill by now. Don't be a stranger. Check back soon.